Hello everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So I welcome you all in this video where we are going to discuss a lot of important questions from the perspective of your RBI, SEBI and NABAD examinations. So let's begin today's video. But before that, if you have not subscribed to our channel till now, then do subscribe and hit the bell notification because this is ultimately going to help you in staying connected with our channel. And this is the telegram group which you can join if you want to enjoy the pre quizzes as well as the latest updates that we provide on this channel. The link of this channel is in description below. Guys, this is the uh, RBI Grade B 2022 course where you will get PDFs, mocks and videos along with your mock 3 uh, mock interviews that is the preparation strategy for your phase 3 interviews. Okay, phase 3 of your RBI Grade B wherein interviews are taken. The next thing that you will get in this new course is the book kit. So the book kit contains all the books mentioned in mentioned right in front of you. And right now we are running a 30% discount on the course which you can use by using the RBI 30 coupon code. And this is the number which you can use to call us if you have any query related to the examination. Now let's begin with the first question. How many people may still face hunger in 2030 as per the state of food security and nutrition in the world? So first of all, this report is released by United Nations. And as per this question, since you would all know that we have a goal of zero hunger by the year 2030, but this report is saying that by the year 2030, the world is surely going to miss this target of zero hunger and there would be people, there would be, be millions of people who would be suffering from hunger by the year 2030. So how many people will be suffering hunger in 2020? That is the question here. So you have the many options right in front of you, out of which 660 million is the right answer. <clears throat> Guys, do you know if this pandemic would not have occurred then this number would be 630 million people. <clears throat> if there would be no pandemic, then by the year 2030, there will be 630 million people who would be suffering from hunger. But because of this pandemic, 30 million people have been added into the list of hunger. Okay, the people who are suffering from hunger. Okay, so that is the first fact that you should know about this report. Now we are going to discuss this report in great length because this is a very important report uh, from your ex exam perspective for both phase one and phase two. Okay, so the very first fact here is the organizations that have released or that have prepared this report collaboratively. So all these organizations are uh, the affiliated organizations of the United Nations itself. So you can read it on your own. The next point here is very important. Nearly 2.37 billion people did not have access to adequate food in 2020, which is an increase of 320 million people in just one year. So in comparison to 2019, 320 million people were pushed into this hunger state, hunger crisis due to the pandemic in 2020. So the total number of people that were suffering hunger, suffering from hunger were 2.37 billion people. So basically they did not have the adequate food, but that doesn't mean that they were starving. Starvation is a different thing and hunger is a different thing. Okay. So they were not starving, but they did not have adequate food to uh, fulfill uh, their hunger, to quench their hunger, okay? The next point here is that this is the range of people in the world who were facing hunger in 2020. So <clears throat> absolute number of people who were facing hunger, not having adequate food and Suffering from hunger, again, are two different thing, things because there is a slight difference in not having adequate food and in suffering from hunger. So this is basically uh, equivalent to starvation, okay, because you won't have enough food to uh, fulfill your hunger, to quench your hunger. Therefore, these two things are different, okay. So keep this thing in your mind. 720 to 811 million people. So this is the range. 
so people between the uh, this range were suffering from hunger in 2020 in comparison to 2019 considering the middle of this range that is 768 million people <clears throat> if you want to take this as the average then 118 million people were facing hunger in 2020 in comparison to 2019 so 118 more people were facing hunger in 2020 in comparison to 2019 that means these many people have been added into the hunger crisis so they have been pushed into the hunger crisis in 2020 solely because of the covid pandemic as well as uh, there were other reasons like war and conflict and disasters as well okay if we take this 811 million as the upper limit as the total number of people who are suffering from hunger in 2020 then the total number of people that were added or that were pushed into hunger crisis in 2020 in comparison to 2019 is 161 million okay so this is basically some mathematical uh, so funda here i hope that you can understand what is the difference between 118 million and 161 million so basically if you take this amount as the absolute uh, number of people who are suffering from hunger then in comparison to 2019 118 million people were added into hunger list so 118 million more people were suffering from hunger in 2020 but if you take this 811 million as the absolute number of people who are suffering from hunger then the number of people that were added into hunger crisis in 2020 is 161. Okay, I hope that this point is clear to you. Now let's see that which region of the earth faced the most adverse uh, hunger crisis. Okay, so the world's more than half of the world's undernourished are found in Asia, 418 million people are in Asia out of the 768 million undernourished people. Then next comes Africa with 282 million people. Then we have Latin America, 60, mil, uh, 60 million people. Oceania, 3 million people. So this Oceania is the huge region uh, which comprises three uh, sub-regions, Polynesia, Micronesia, Melanesia. So that is the geographical fact that you would know about Oceania, okay? next comes the north america and europe so this portion this region has the least hunger uh, least number of people who are suffering from hunger okay so we have discussed this first fact that uh, uh, asia is the region that account for more than half of the uh, undernourished people in 2020 africa recorded the sharpest increase in hunger with 21 percent of its population 21% of its people suffering from hunger. So this means that one in five people is suffering from hunger in Africa. So that is a huge number. So this is another fact that you should remember. Okay, so this is about children under five. Malnutrition among children under five. And this is a very important table, guys. You should memorize this table because this is stating the reality of the children who are facing uh, the worst side of the hunger who are facing the um, i would say the brunt who are facing the brunt of this pandemic or this hunger i would say children with stunting shortness stunting means shortness of height in comparison to age so you would or know what does stunting, wasting, and obesity mean. So I'm not going to explain it to you. It is written on the screens itself. So the total number of children who are suffering from stunting, particularly we are talking about the children who are under the age of five. Remember this thing, guys. So they are 149.2 million people. 22% of the total children under the age of five in the world. Okay. Next comes the prevalence of stunting has decreased from 33.1% in 2000 to 22% in 2020. So if we take this overall period into consideration, then stunting has reduced significantly, but still more gains are yet to be achieved in this area. Okay. 
In 2020, nearly three quarters of the world's stunted children lived in just two regions, and these two regions are of Africa region. For example, this is the Central Africa and the Sub-Saharan Africa. So these are the two regions which have three quarters of the stunted children. Okay. Next comes the wasting. So the total number of children who were suffering from wasting, 45.4 million. And this is 6.7% of the global children population under the age of 5. Nearly one quarter lived in Sub-Saharan Africa and more than half lived in Southern Asia, where India is also a country. So the sub-region with the highest prevalence of wasting above 14%. So sub Southern Asia is the sub-region and it is suffering from the highest prevalence of wasting at 14%. So it is above 14% in Southern Asia. Next comes obesity. Children with the problem of overweight, 38.9 million which constitutes 5.7% of the global children who are under the age of 5. There has been little change at global level in two decades. 5.7% is the obesity rate in 2020 and 5.4% was the obesity rate in 2000. So we can see we have achieved a very marginal uh, increase in the obesity. Instead of declining this rate, we have observed the increase in this rate in the two years, in the past 20 years. Okay. So that was about stunting, wasting and obesity among children under the age of five. I hope that this is clear to you now. The next point here, and this is the last part of this report only. So the highest cause, the high cost of healthy diet is preventing almost 3 billion people from obtaining healthy diets. And guys, if you remember this report, the cost of plate of food 2020. So this report stated, if you remember that South Sudan was the place that serves the most expensive food on plate, whereas New York is the place where the cost of food, cost of plate of a food is the least expensive. Can you tell me how much an average Indian spend, uh, spend on his food in India as part of its, as part of its daily income? So that is your question that you have to tell me in the comment section below. And remember, this was the first of its kind report that was released in 2020 that assessed the price of food in different countries. So that's why this report is important and you have to tell me how much amount or how much percentage of the income does an average Indian spend on food. Okay. So this is your question. Next point here is something that we have already discussed that how many people will be there by the year 2030 who will still be suffering from hunger. So if the pandemic has not occurred, then three, 630 billion people would be there. But now at the present situation, already pandemic has occurred. So the total number of people who would be suffering from hunger by 2030 is 660 million. So I hope that this report is clear to you. And if you have any query, then you can ask me in the comment section below or on the Telegram channel as well. Now let's discuss the second question. Who has been appointed as the first honorary consul general, general of Vietnam in India? So this is the first time the honorary consul general of Vietnam has been appointed. First of all, you need to know that he has been appointed in the state of Karnataka. And who is this person out of these options? It is NS. Shrinivas Murthy, who is an industrialist. Okay. Now, guys, this consul general has been created particularly to promote trade, to promote investment between Vietnam and the state of Karnataka. Okay, so that is the purpose of creating this honorary consul general. Now, consul general or consulate general is basically an extended arm of the embassy. So this works in different spheres, like it uh, helps the uh, helps the tourists or helps the immigrants of the other country in our country 
to in getting the visas in getting different kinds of services so that is the work of the consul journal and here the specific purpose for creating this consul journal is to promote trade and investment between karnataka and the state and the country of vietnam guys can you tell me what is the capital of vietnam in the comment section below okay the next question is which has become the first country to adopt bhim upi नेपाल श्रीलंका लाओस फिलीपींस भूटान आउट ऑफ दीज ऑप्शन इट इज भूटान सो हियर रुपे डेबिट कार्ड नेटवर्क वॉज ऑल्सो लॉन्च बाय पी एम नरेंद्र मोदी सो इट इट इज ऑल्सो फंक्शनल इन भूटान एंड नाउ इट हैज ऑल्सो अडॉप्टेड दी भीम यू पी आई विच इज क्रिएटेड बाय एन पी सी आई नेशनल पेमेंट्स कॉर्पोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया ओके कैन यू टेल मी वट इज दुल फॉर्म ऑफ भीम द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ भीम next question is which state has launched the chief minister's covid-19 widows support scheme to provide 2.5 lakh to each widow who lost their husband due to the covid-19 pandemic assam maharashtra odisha andhra pradesh kerala the right answer is assam so the cm of assam is himant biswa sharma who has been recently appointed as the cm of uh, assam not only this scheme apart from this scheme there is another scheme as well which is shishu seva scheme so under the scheme the children who have lost both of their parents due to the covid pandemic they get financial support from the government of assam now in what manner will the support will be given to the children and how much amount will be given to the children so these are the next two questions that are popping in your mind right so the first answer the first question is that the first answer to the first question is that uh, under the scheme a fixed deposit in the name of the children will be created in the bank and that fixed deposit will be of rupees 7 lakh so exact amount is 7 lakh 8000 something something but you don't have to memorize the entire amount just remember it is over 7 lakh okay so fd would be created and the amount would be 7 lakh of that time now out of this 7 lakh every month the child will get rupees 3500 for his monthly uh, monthly maintenance so he will get 3500 out of this amount every month and once he attains the age of 24 then all the amount in the fd will be credited to his bank account so that is the mechanism through which financial support will be provided to the children who uh, have lost their parents under this shishu seva scheme of the assam government apart from this you would have also heard about the assam cattle preservation bill now that bill is not very important because nobody is going to ask you about that bill in your examination but since we are discussing about assam so let's discuss what that bill is i'm not going to tell you the bill in detail it's just a brief uh, introduction about this so this uh, uh, assam cattle preservation bill is going uh, is going to prohibit the cow slaughter in the state of assam you would say that this is the common thing that many of the states are doing at present in their respective states preventing the cow slaughter so what is the difference here the difference here is that the cow slaughter is not only banned in the entire state basically this is banning the cow slaughter in the regions where the other communities like hindus jainis buddhist or these kinds of communities communities are in majority so cow slaughter or beef selling is banned in those regions and in kilometers in some kilometers of those regions where hindu dominated population reside so this is the first time that a bill focusing on the region region has been released okay in respect to cow slaughter 
So that is why I decided to tell you about this Assam Cattle Preservation Bill. So that was all about this question. But I want to ask a question from you and that is, guys, can you tell me who is the governor of Assam? Governors are always important. So tell me who is the present governor of Assam? Okay, coming back to the next question. Where is India's first green hydrogen mobility project being developed? Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Jammu and Kashmir. Ladakh is the right answer. Now, which company is going to develop this? So this is another major question that can be framed out of this news. NTPC, National Thermal Power Corporation, is going to develop this project in Ladakh. Now, this is the project in mobility sector. So obviously there would be transportation. In the initial stage, NP NTPC has plied five buses which run on hydrogen, green hydrogen on the streets of Ladakh. Now this N NTPC is going to establish a solar plant as well in Ladakh as well as a hydrogen generation unit, green hydrogen generation unit. which is going to produce the hydrogen, which will act as the fuel for these transportation, for these buses and the different vehicles, which is which are going to run on the green hydrogen. Guys, do you know what green hydrogen is? Green hydrogen is basically the hydrogen fuel that is created out of uh, the low carbon fuel that is created by electrolysis of water through electricity. And that electricity is generated through the low carbon resources. So basically that is the concept of green hydrogen. You need not to go into the detail of what green hydrogen is because that is not our terrain. We have to keep our studies focused, okay? So this is the first green hydrogen mobility project. Now remember that this green hydrogen generation unit is going to be established in Leh. And Leh will become the first ever city in India that has a project on hydrogen based mobility. Okay, so I hope that I'm clear here. Now, your question, who is the Lieutenant General of Ladakh? That you have to tell me in the comment section below. Next question, who is the author of Riding Free and Olympic Journey? Nihal Sarin, Leander Piaz, uh, Manpreet Singh, Panka Jadwani, Imtia Zanis. So right answer is Imtia Zanis. He is basically an equestrian. Equestrian is horse riding. Okay. So horse riding is called equestrian, the sport of equestrian. Remember this. Do you know who Nihal Sarin is? He is a chess player. Leander Piaz is a tennis player. And Manpreet Singh is hockey player. Panka Jadwani, we all know, he, uh, he plays billiards. I hope that this question is also clear to you. So that's the end of today's video. I hope that you have learned something during the video. Thank you so much for watching the video.